Hello everyone, welcome to week three. Um, this week is really dealing with surgical asepsis, which is the counterpart to what we learned last week with medical asepsis. Remember how I told you there were two parts? Well, here's the second part. It's coming up for you. Um, surgical asepsis is really going to take us through chapter 22 through 24, but it's also going to help you with your homework. 23 is really talking about all of the instruments which is actually what part of your assignment is for this week. So I thought that would be a good one for you guys to take a look at and read as well. So let's start off with what is surgical asepsis? Well, that's really the procedure to destroy and eliminate all microorganisms from instruments and other objects before they can have a chance to enter someone else. Um, when we talk about surgical asepsis, what we're really some examples that we have are, you know, sterilizing surgical instruments, doning ster sterile or surgical attire, um, placing of surgical drapes over you know, the sites that we're going to be doing um, surgery on. Those are all great examples of what a surgical asepsis means. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is how we sanitize our instruments. So sanitizing instruments really means to make them sanitary or clean which is usually done by scrubbing the item. So what's going to happen is they're going to start off after you have your uh, procedure with them, they're going to go into a container of distilled water. Okay, That distilled water is pretty much going to get those microorganisms kind of up and moving around. Then what's going to happen is you're going to place the item or the instrument into a uh, container of surgical soap which generally has a pH of 7, uh, so it's a little more acidic. And then what happens is, is that we want to just kind of scrub that instrument with a nylon brush to get off all of the particles um, that are visible for us. And once you've completed that, you're going to place the item back into the distilled water to rinse it off. Now, once it's actually rinsed off like that, we want to place it onto a uh, towel or cloth and make sure that it's dried completely before we move it on to a disinfecting stage. And disinfecting, you know, that's the process where we use um, liquid, a special liquid or a process called pasteurization. Um, that actually destroys and inhibits the growth of most microorganisms. So this is generally done after we do the sanitization of the instrument. Um, disinfectant may be used to further clean instruments or items that cannot go into an autoclave. There are four levels of disinfectant that you need to know about. There's the low level, intermediate level, high level, and sterile. So make sure that you understand and know the difference between those four stages and those four levels of disinfectant. Now let's move on to what sterilization means. So sterilization is where you actually destroy all microorganisms, including those endospores. So that means we are completely taking them to a complete clean level. There's nothing left on them. Um, this is usually done by using dry heat, gas, um, chemical sterilants, or autoclaving. The one that we're really going to focus on this week is the autoclaving. Okay? That's where we use steam to clean our items. What we're going to do is we're going to start by understanding, you know, what autoclaves are, how we clean our instruments, and how they go into an autoclave. So autoclaving, we have to wrap our instruments um, once they've gone through the sanitization, the disinfection, and the sterilization. So wrapping them, there's uh, four different types of materials that we could use. I'm sorry, three different types of materials we could use. There's autoclave or sterilization paper. There's sterilization cloth wraps, which are what we'll play with in lab. And there's also sterilization pouches, which I can show you we do have those available in the lab as well. The proper method for wrapping when you're using the cloth or the paper is a fan folder and envelope. This is done so that way when you open up the package, you don't contaminate the inside. There are parts that are left open that can be touched without having to um, or contaminate the, the sterile pack that we just created. There are three key elements 
um, that need to be on the package when you autoclave. So that needs to be the name of the instrument that's within the package, the expiration date of the package, and that will depend on what wrapping material that you use. So make sure you take a look. I believe the paper is only 30 days where the cloth could be 60 days. So make sure you know ahead of time how long your item will be good for. And you also want to put your initials on it. And the reason that we do that is because if something is not sterile within the pack, we generally will go back to the person who wrapped it and say, hey, you know, what happened here? You don't want to harp on them, you don't want to yell at them, but you want to bring it to their attention so that they know the next thing that they do is they, they don't um, do the process improper. And the final piece is, is really loading that autoclave. So it's really important that we load it correctly in order to um, make sure that we get proper sterilization of our items. So you want to make sure that all of your packs are placed in vertically, not horizontally. Vertically actually um, inhibits the steam to penetrate through the pack instead of just over it. Um, you also want to make sure that each pack is separated by at least one inch, but one to three inches is um, preferred, so that way it can, the steam can cross through the packages, okay? And if you have any jars that you're going to be autoclaving, you want to make sure you weigh them on their side, and you have them lit at least a jar or, or off completely, so that way the whole item outside and inside could be sterilized. Autoclaving is very easy, and we'll actually be able to play with that a little bit in lab this week, so come prepared to play with an autoclave. Um, the other piece that I want to talk to you guys about is a sterile scrub. Now, sterile scrubbing is very similar um, in, in effect to doing a, a proper medical asepsis hand washing, but it's to a whole other level. Okay? It's a very thorough process. Um, it's very harsh on your skin because you're kind of you're scrubbing quite frequently. Um, but what you want to do first is you want to start with that um, that medical aseptic hand wash that we learned last week. So you're going to start wash just with the regular hand wash. Once your hand washing is complete, you're going to actually put on your surgical cap, your goggles, and you're also going to put on your mask. The reason being is those are non-sterile items. So we want to put those on prior to doing a sterile hand wash. Otherwise, putting them on after would defeat the purpose of the hand wash. And then when you go to start the sterile hand washing, you're going to actually have a sterile pack. That's going to come with an impregnated sponge and a uh, nail pick. The nail pick gets used first because you want to go under each fingernail and you want to dig the dirt out. Okay? Even if you think there's nothing under there, you need to do that first. This should be done underneath the water and each time after you use the nail pick, after every nail, rinse the nail pick off. Okay? Then you'll pick up the surgical scrub brush and you'll actually start washing your hands. You'll do the um, tops, the inside between fingers, and you will actually do up to your elbows, okay? The whole time you want to keep your arms and your hands upward, okay? And when you rinse, you're going to rinse so that way everything flows off the elbow. You want to also make sure that after you finish, your hands stay above your waist. Anything below the waist is not sterile. So keeping them above the waist is how we keep our body and our hands sterile, okay? If your hands fall below that and you go below your waist, you'll have to re-sterilize your whole field. Okay, so make sure that you understand that. And if that happens, you need to let your provider that you're working with know because he may need to also um, re-sterilize himself. All right, guys, those are the big tips that I have for you this week. Um, I want to talk about your homework. Um, I have put up a rubric for you guys to take a look at prior to submitting your work. But your assignment this week is really looking at um, a, a minor surgery procedure. So something like, for instance, um, a mole removal, or maybe you have a, um, a boil removal or a cyst excision, something like that. That's a minor surgery that could happen in the office. But what you're going to want to look at and what you're going to want to write about is kind of the basic procedure. Tell me what happened during that procedure. And I also want you to tell me what type of instruments are used during that procedure and how you would set up the sterile tray for that procedure. Okay. That's the big point that I want to touch base with this week with that assignment. All right, guys. And the other thing, um, you will have one discussion post this week, and it is due on Tuesday with your two responses on Saturday. All right. I'm apparently needed outside, so I will see you guys on Wednesday. Have a great day.